welcome back to my series here on YouTube regarding the DMVPN in the context of the Anarsi exam. And uh, I apologize, it took me a while to get back to this series, but I am back and I'm glad you're joining me. You can see I've just spun up in viral the topology that we've been using. So go back to the previous parts of my DMVPN series if you need to learn about this topology, why it's set up this way, what IP addressing we're using. And uh, we have static routing, as you know, set up uh, to give full reachability in this topology. So now we are ready and raring to go with the actual DMVPN configs. So in a previous part, we navigated to the sample configuration that Cisco gave us in the documentation. And I have placed that sample configuration in this notepad file and I've doctored it up for our scenario. So you can see that one of the things that I'm going to be applying on all the devices, and I'm going to go out and do that right now, all the devices except that router one, which represents just like a cloud in our topology, but on all the devices, the hubs and spokes, I'm going to be creating this simple ICE account policy. It's going to specify the authentication, the encryption, the hashing. We are then going to use a wildcarded pre-shared key. So notice the quad zero and the quad zero there to indicate this is a wildcard pre-shared key. This is going to give nice scalability, not the best security, but certainly nice scalability as additional spokes come online. I'm creating an IPsec transform set. And then we are applying that transform set into the crypto IPsec profile. This is one of the scalable components of the design, makes it so easy taking this simple configuration. Notice we then put the tunnel protection IPsec profile command under our tunnel interface. In our case, this will be creating the tunnel interface, but I'm going to put this on the clipboard and we're going to just paste this into all of the devices. Now, I won't bore you with this, so I'll go ahead and use the magic of video. I'll just do one for you live here, and then I'll go in and I'll do the rest uh, kind of behind the scenes so you're not bored with that. So I didn't mean to go to this router as the hub. Let me terminate that window and just real quick here, create a new tab for our hub. There we go. Slide that into the correct position and it should be at the 1700. No, that's router two. All right, just give me one moment here. I'm just gonna jump back into the viral topology and see what port number, ah, 17001. Well, that explains why I was having trouble there. Let's, uh, this is the tab for router one, so I wanna create a new tab for my hub. All right, sorry I'm boring you with this, folks, but we're going to be up and running in just one second. There we go. We are on the hub device, and I'm going to paste in our IPsec configuration, and I'll run and do that on routers 2, router 3, and router 4 in the background as I promised. All right, so I've got that done for us. The next thing that we are going to do is we've got configurations that are specific for the hub, and that are specific for the spokes. So I'm gonna grab the hub configuration and what we are configuring in this portion is the tunnel itself and we are configuring the IP NHRP, the next hop resolution protocol uh, parameters. So let's take a look at this. I go under the tunnel interface and I assign an IP address from the 10.x range and then I indicate that when it comes to multicast traffic, we are going to support it. And this hub is going to dynamically reflect that out to the spoke devices. This command is going to be different on a spoke. We're going to be pointing the multicast to the hub device. We then have a network identifier for the NHRP. We set up our tunnel source. This is the physical IP address that I have on the interface. And then the uh, multi-point GRE is specified for our tunnel mode. Notice we're going to do an MTU setting here so that we can avoid fragmentation somewhere out there in the DMVPN. We're going to fragment the packets 
before sending them in the DMVPN uh, with the IPMTU size there. So that is the configuration on the hub device. Notice, very simple. You'll want to work with this, practice with it, so that you could identify in the exam environment the correct configuration that would need to be on these devices. So now I'm gonna to go to the router two device and we will grab that configuration and we'll just talk about it right here because it's actually a little easier to see, isn't it? So we're gonna go under the tunnel interface of one of our spokes. We set up the IP address from the 10.x range and then notice we have to map the hub device that we are using as our next hop server we are going to be mapping that with the IP address that's on the tunnel of the hub and the physical interface IP address. Once we have that mapping, notice down here, we're gonna set the next top server address so that this device knows where to go for resolution of those next hops. And of course, it's the tunnel IP address. We have the multicast statement I promised for NHRP and we are pointing to the hub device. There's that matching network ID. We set the tunnel source appropriately, and we set the multipoint GRE as the mode. So very, very simple configuration, uh, similar in a lot of ways to the hub, but of course there are some key distinctions there. So that was the R2 config. Here I am on the R2 device. I will paste that in and uh, as I promised, behind the scenes, I'll go and finish the other spokes. And so I've got those spokes doctored up now with their configurations. And, you know, I really need to point out something. Uh, before we would even jump into this as we have done, don't forget, you would want to make sure you have full reachability. So uh, one good thing would be to go ahead and go to the hub and ping one of the destinations that we know we have out there in the network, like the uh, 4.1, which is down on the R4 device. So great, we have the underlying reachability thanks to our static routing. Just a little bit of an aside there, I forgot to point that out, that we have those static routes in place. All right, so I've got the hub and the spoke configurations in. We know we have the IPsec configuration in, and now notice on our hub and spoke devices, we're gonna go in and we're gonna doctor up the EIGRP. Uh, we're gonna manipulate the hold time. We're gonna manipulate, uh, turn off the next top self feature and the no IP split horizon feature. So we're turning off split horizon, turning off the next top self feature. These manipulations that we make to EIGRP is to make sure it functions properly in the very unique DMVPN configuration. Also, you can see I'm enabling EIGRP on our physical interfaces as well as the tunnel interfaces. We've got some 172.16 networks hanging off of the spokes, so that's included. So I'm gonna just go quickly and place this configuration on all of the devices. I'll do one live for you, and then I'll do the rest in the background. So here is the doctoring up of the tunnel and the enablement of EIGRP on all those interfaces. Did that on the hub, and oh, well, you know what? It'll be so quick. I'll just go ahead and do it on all of the spokes live because as I said, it's just going to be a real quick task to do that. And notice we have our adjacencies coming up. So that's a really good sign. And in fact, it's at this point that we should be operational. We've done it. So one of the things that you can do is the handy show DMVPN command. And notice you can show specifics about the configuration, but you can also just say show DMVPN, and this will show you that we currently have a static tunnel properly established in the upstate, a secured tunnel with the hub. And that is exactly what we would expect to see based on our discussions of DMVPN in the previous episodes, 
One of the things we talked about was operationally how this is the first thing that's going to happen, right? Your spokes are going to establish those static tunnels with the hub and they will be exchanging the EIGRP route information over those connections. But now what is great is if we go to communicate with one of the networks on a spoke, we will dynamically see the spoke-to-spoke -spoke tunnel formed. That is, of course, our DMVPN phase two. So let's check that out. So if I do a show IP interface brief, we see that we have these loopbacks to simulate the 172.16 networks. These are off of the spokes. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy that to the clipboard, actually. And then we'll slide over to, how about we go all the way over to the R2 uh, spoke device. And this device is, let's do our show DMVPN. And we can see that, yes, we have our static tunnel with the hub. Great. But we are now going to send traffic to that network that is behind the R4 spoke. If I do a show IP route, by the way, let's see what's going on in the routing table. Look at that. Thanks to the EIGRP that is functioning properly over the DMVPN, we know how to get to that prefix we're about to ping. And notice it's going to be using tunnel zero. So I'm going to ping and paste that in. And we are going to make that ping. And then if we do our show DMVPN now, we should see, look at that, we have our static tunnel uh, still established, of course, to the hub device, but then notice we are tunneling to the 10114 uh, device. And this is so cool. Look at the decode here. This is a temporary tunnel. So this is our spoke to spoke tunnel that is working beautifully. Very cool. And, uh, you know, you can see these things uh, time out. You can, it's just so easy for you to track using this simple show DMVPN command. All right. So the only thing left for us to talk about is the fact that there is one issue with this configuration, and that is it is not very scalable. For example, we can't do default routing in this topology. We can't do EIGRP summarization. And those are all things that we would most likely want to engage in, those scalability uh, configurations, because that's just a great practice. So to take it to DMV, DMVPN phase three, where we can do the scalable config, it's so incredibly simple. Notice on the hub, we are just going to go to the hub device and we're going to add two NHRP commands there to the tunnel zero interface. We are going to do the NHRP redirect, which is required on the hub. And then every device, every hub and every spoke is going to get this IP NHRP shortcut command. This is allowing the spokes to go ahead and help with the NHRP resolution so the spokes can start answering queries. And then this redirect command is needed on the hub. All of this, by the way, has to do with trickery that's going on uh, of the DMVPN for the underlying Ceph, Cisco Express Forwarding. So these little doctor commands, doctoring up the routers with these commands, enable the scalable uh, phase three type behavior. So what did I say? I said, well, we only need the shortcut command on the spokes. So I'm going to just go to each spoke real quick, and we're going to uh, go into the tunnel zero interface, of course, and we're going to drop in the shortcut command on each of our spokes. So let's do that to R3, and then finally, let's do it to the R4 device. And that is that. So we now have a fully functional and scalable DMVPN 
configuration. So again, be sure to watch all these parts. Some of these videos you may want to watch a couple of times and you definitely want to spend time just practicing looking over the configurations of the hub and the configurations required for the spokes and get a good sense for those for your NRC certification exam. One of the things you might want to do is, you know, go ahead and put them all together, right? So I could go and reorganize this notepad file so that when it comes to the hub, all of the commands that are going to be on the hub are in just one section of this file. I liked to do it step by step the way we did it from a teaching perspective, but from a learning perspective, you may want to see, like I said, all of the configuration that would be under the hub in one place. Well, thank you so much for watching this series on the DMVPN here at the YouTube home of Anthony Sequera. Thanks again, everyone. And I'll be back soon with more great videos for you.